Hey guys, it's me, Vance Dykes. So, 2018 is just about ready to come to a close, and you know, looking back on this year, I have to be honest, it really hasn't been my it hasn't been my year. It it's been the rough year that I've ever had so far in my life, and that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to talk to you guys about you know why 2018 really hasn't been my year. Um, the first reason, um, for those of you who have been watching my videos ever since the beginning, like 2011 or 2013, whenever you started to watch my videos and you started to follow me, you guys know that I've had a dog named Ginger. She was half Doberman, half German Shepherd, and she has rarely on occasion been featured in some of my videos. And, um, well, unfortunately, and you know, I've been meaning to make a video about this around the time when it happened, but I just got so busy with work and school that, you know, I just never got around to making this video. So I'm going to talk about it now. Um, earlier this year in May, we had to put her down. She's no longer with us. She's gone. She's dead. I lost my dog. So that's one thing that's happened this year that I wasn't really happy about. And around the time when it was going on, you know, my parents were bawling and especially my dad. And my dad's the one person I would never expect to cry for any reason. The only time I ever saw him cry the way he did when we had to put down Ginger was at our, at my grandma Talent's funeral back up in Michigan many years ago. He was very close to grandma Talent and um, my great grandma Talent. Yes, her last name was Talent. Um, so mom and dad, they were upset. I think mom was probably doing the most crying because that's what women do. They're emotional creatures. Um, me on the other hand, you know, I was trying to be strong and hold it in. But when I saw that dog take her last breath, Niagara Falls, I was crying. And I tried to be strong, but you know, you can only be strong for so long. I was upset about it because I've had this dog ever since my junior high school days. So it's been a long time. That dog has always been a part of my life ever since junior high school. And it was really sad to see her go. And, you know, it's kind of surreal being in this house now and she's not around. And every time when I go outside and I find a toy of hers that has been lost underneath the trees, it's like, or underneath the bushes, it's like memories. So that's one thing. Um, another thing that has happened this year that um, I'm not really happy about is that, once again, those of you who have been following me on YouTube for so many years, you know that I've had a fiance, um, a beautiful woman from the Philippines who is 16 years my senior, and I guess you, you know where this is going. Um, we were engaged for about five and a half years, and a few days before Halloween, we ended our relationship. So that's another thing that's happened. I am no longer engaged. I am single and I'm back on the market again. And, um, you know, personally, I hate being single. You know, I just can't imagine life without having a significant other by my side. But that's a topic for another vlog, which I'll make later on. I'm not sure if I'll make it before the end of this year or sometime early next year. I don't know when I'm going to make that vlog. Like I said, I get very busy with work and school. And, you know, that's another thing. I think the worst thing that has happened to me so far this year is that I really haven't been doing well in my classes. And it's not that I've been like a slacker, like a lazy bum who just sits back and is a lazy couch potato and he just watches TV all day. I really have been putting as much effort as I possibly could into my work, in my homework, and in my essays, and so on and so forth. But the problem is that, you know, I work full time for a very demanding company for five days a week. And, you know, when you're working full time for a very demanding company, it it's very time consuming. It takes a lot of time off your hands. You don't have the time to sit in a library and read all these books. You know, how many books that the professors may want you to read and write some detailed Harvard, Oxford, Notre Dame style essay that they want you to write, you know, trying to explain what you've learned. You know, you just don't have all the time for that. And right now, since I'm getting closer to getting my bachelor's degree, it's just, it's a real struggle. Because I feel that, you know, from my observance, as you, as you succeed higher and higher in education, you find that the classes and the requirements for the classes get tougher and tougher. So it's like, 
it's no wonder there are some people who don't usually want to go to college because they don't want to deal with all that work. And I understand that, but, you know, I really want to be a priest in the Anglican Church so bad, you know. I'm willing to do what I need to do. And if that means I need to cram as much study time as possible, then in God's holy name, so be it. I need to study as much as I possibly can. I need to do everything that I can. And so far, I failed one class. I was able to pass another class. And there was this one class that I've been taking recently. I've just finished it, but I still haven't gotten the final results of my last assignments and the final grade. But I think more than likely, I'm either going to fail that class with either an F or a D. I'm not sure. And it's just very disencouraging because, you know, you work as hard as you possibly can. And when you don't achieve what it is that you're trying to achieve, when you don't achieve that amount of academic excellence that you're trying to achieve, you just basically have doubts. You wonder if you're ever going to get your degrees at all, you know, and you wonder if you're ever going to have that dream career that you've always wanted, whether if it's being a doctor or being a lawyer, or in my case, being a priest in the Church of Jesus Christ. And, you know, it's just very disheartening because basically how it works is that, you know, in the church that I'm in right now, the Anglican Church, you know, they require their priests to be educated because you don't want some preacher who doesn't know what they're talking about, right? You don't want some nut job coming out of nowhere with a Bible in his hand. He's reading a certain portion of the Bible and he's saying, this is what the Word of God says, but not really understanding what's really being said. Like, for example, when you read certain parts of the gospel where Jesus says that if your right eye causes you to sin, you're supposed to pluck it out and cast it from you. Or if your right hand causes you to sin, you're supposed to cut it off and throw it away from you because it's better to enter the kingdom of heaven maimed than to have two hands or two eyes and be thrown into hell. You know, I'm not too sure. As far as I know, there are no preachers who actually say that's the word of God. That's what you're supposed to be doing. And Fortunately, I haven't seen any Christians who are missing an eye or missing a hand or wearing an eye patch going around where children are asking them, are you a pirate? Have you been in Pirates of the Caribbean? You know. So in churches like the Anglican Church and in the Catholic Church and churches just like them, you know, they want their priests to be educated. You want a priest and a preacher who knows what they're talking about, who's not talking nonsense, who's not talking about, you know, anything that sounds cult-like, but actually sounds legitimate and actually sounds like, okay, they're really preaching something that is divine, not something that's something that a psychopath would say. So with that being said, yeah, 2018 just really hasn't been a great year for me. And as I talk to my friends about this, they say that, well, you know, there's always next year. And I agree with that. You know, I I'm I'm not going to say that I'm looking forward to 2019, but I am wondering what 2019 is going to hold in store for me. And I have, I have hope that, you know, things will get better in 2019, you know, as I want you, I want you to understand this, just because there are some classes that I failed, I'm not going to give up on my journey to becoming a priest. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep pursuing my education. I'm going to keep pursuing my bachelor's degree. I'm going to keep pursuing my master's degree because ultimately I need a master's degree in divinity. So, you know, speaking to my last rector in my last church, the St. John's Episcopal Church in Kissimmee, Florida, he said that it's important for me to earn a master's degree in divinity in order to become a priest. And, um, yeah, so that's my ultimate goal as far as, you know, my education goes is to earn that um, master's degree so that I can be able to present myself to a bishop. And he says, okay, Mr. Dykes, you are qualified to become a priest. That is my ultimate goal, is that I'm kneeling before a bishop and he puts his hand on me and he says, you are now a priest in the church of Jesus Christ. Until that happens, I have no intention on stopping. I have every intention to keep moving forward. I think worst case scenario, I may have to transfer from the school that I'm in right now and transfer to another school where they don't have as much academic requirements as this one does right now. So, yeah. Another thing that's happened this year is that my car, my new car, well, it's actually a used car. It's a 2003 Ford Taurus, and it's been going on the fritz almost every chance it's had the opportunity to go on the fritz this year. You know, and I've from this, I've learned a little about how to take care of a car, but it just, that car is like a ticking time bomb. It's like any minute, it's just going to, 
I'm sure that ultimately that car is going to die out. And, you know, that's something else I got to think about is I got to think about, you know, saving my money so I can buy myself another car. Actually, what I'm thinking about doing is buying myself a truck because I'm a pretty big guy. I'm a big guy. I'm very tall. I'm very wide. And sometimes I have a hard time getting, well, not getting in, but getting out of my car. It's a real effort to do so. You know, I need a truck. That's what I need. And fortunately, I've driven one vehicle that's just about as big as a truck, which gives me enough confidence to say, you know what, I can drive a truck. Because trying to drive my dad's truck years ago, that thing, you know, I was just always worried that I was just going to crash into something without even trying because that thing was so massive. But I was able to drive a big commercial vehicle at my, at my job. And um, fortunately, you know, I had no problems with it. So good for me. So that's pretty much everything that has happened this year that has really put a damper on my spirits. My dog dying, losing my fiance, not doing well in my classes, and my car constantly going on the fritz. I can honestly say that 2018 has been a very crappy year for me. And like I said before, I really hope and pray that 2019 is a thousand times more promising than this year has been. So. For those of you who have taken the time to watch this video all the way through, I thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I really like it when people listen to me when I have something to say. I enjoy that because I really don't like talking to myself. I enjoy it when people listen to what I have to say. And one of the things I hope for when people listen to me is that maybe I can rub, rub off some knowledge on them and um, you know they can learn not to make any of the same mistakes that I've made in life so far. And with that, I will say goodbye and God bless and peace out. I'm trying to put on a brave face.